Welcome to the Crack On Podcast, hosted by me, John Saunders. Crack On! Hey guys, welcome to Series 2, Episode 3 already. And today I've just got the absolute privilege to introduce Rob Starr, the CEO of the Seiko Group, based in Brighton. He is a Ironman. Um, he has swam the channel in a relay, which again is a, just an awesome story and, and journey in itself. He's an all-round top guy. He's got the Star Trust charity, which he originated with his family. And I just, a, just like I said, an all-round top guy. And I hope you really enjoy it. Crack on. Morning, Rob. How are you doing, mate? Morning. All good, John. Always good to see you, matey. Yeah. Always a pleasure, mate. Always a pleasure. <laughs> I, I'm so chuffed you said yes, to be honest, mate, because I... Uh, I really wanted to, I wanted to put you in the series one, but I'm so chuffed you said yes. Thank you. Well, I was, listen, it was an honour to be asked. I never expected you to give me the call. So, um, oh, never. Listen, it's, it's appreciated. So. Yeah, mate. And I think we, you know, on the Sussex uh, coast since we've come down, you, you know, you've been amazing. Your family's been amazing. And the charity has been part of something that, and we'll go into that as the podcast goes along. But it's been a really integral part of our family, which has been brilliant. Good. Good. Vice versa. So, yeah. thank you. Awesome. So right, we're going to crack on. We're going to crack it off straight okay. on. So okay. A couple of questions I start with. So what does crack on mean to you? Crack on. Well, first, <laughs> crack on means John Saunders, of course, because <laughs> you came. <laughs> I mean, that was your phrase, wasn't it? Every morning, crack on. You know, through the dark, dark days of <laughs> pandemics, John was cracking on. Yeah. No, no, seriously. I mean, that's that's really funny because yeah, if anyone says crack on to me, I just see you. That's yeah. it. <laughs> if if that was a uh, if I was going to to uh, break that down and what it means to me, yeah, really simple. The first step is without a doubt the hardest. I mean, there is no doubt. No matter what you do, getting yeah. out of bed in the morning, walking in the sea, going to work, picking up a new book, whatever it is, step one is the hardest step, mm. and that's crack on. And to yeah. me, I, I've always lived by um, a year from now. I wish I'd started today. Absolutely. And, uh, and yeah, that, that's it. That's cracking on. It's just literally step one. Step two is always going to be about 500% easier than step one. Yeah, yeah. I love so that. I love that. Just get of, on. Lots of examples in your life where you've, where you've had to take that step one. Again, we're going to go through them a bit later. Yeah, but, yeah. So another question I have with everyone as well. So I talk about idols or people you look up to and aspire to. Obviously, you've been in business for, a, well, we're saying we're coming up to 30 years now, you know, which, <laughs> is, which is awesome in Seiko, which is congratulations yeah. on that. Thank but have you. you ever had anyone or, you know, people around you that you've just, you know, you've looked up to, looked into, you know, and, and, and learned from? It's a, it's a hard one for me, that, because I'm, I've never been a starstruck person, mm. ever. I mean, you know, as a kid, I would never look at sports people or pop singers or movie stars. I could massively appreciate them and what they do. But I've never been one to chase autographs. It's just never, it's always been a bit weird for me to think like that. So, and when someone, if you were to say, who, who, who do I look up to and who's my idol? The obvious person for me to say would be my dad. And yeah. I always say that, but and I say that all the time. It was my dad. I lost him very young and, and he was always my idol and the person I looked up to. But I, I was you know, thinking about that as to why I say him. People would assume I said, and I'll tell you why, because I've been thinking about this. You said you're going to ask me this question. I'm gonna yeah. and, and there's a reason I, I say it was my dad. And it's actually my dad. And it's, a, and it's actually anyone who just tries to leave the world a little better than they found it. Awesome. And that's ordinary people is my idol. And my yeah. dad was just an ordinary bloke. Now, he happened to be really funny. He happened to be uber nice mm. he happened to be engaging he happened to listen to you and you would if you'd have met him you would have just loved him yeah. but he was just an ordinary bloke trying to get through life and he definitely left the world better than he found it yeah. and i so i don't have a, an idol i think i have this ordinary person idol if you know what i mean it's just yeah, that because yeah. i'm an ordinary bloke and you're an ordinary bloke mm. and we just we just crack on right we just do what we can and we don't moan about it we don't cry about it we take the hits yeah. we get up we take a few more hits we keep getting up and along the way we don't hurt people and i just yeah. that's kind of it really yeah. and i don't think i can so i name it as my dad but i think he covers that whole 
the whole genre of ordinary people, man and woman, who just want to get through life. <laughs> and make it a better place. But, but that goes really nicely into the charity. Talk us through something that, I mean, your sister and, and Rosie are the ones that really <laughs> hounded me when I got involved. But yeah, I tell you, I was so chuffed did, to get yeah. involved. But talk us through, obviously, working on from leaving the world in a better place. The charity that you've got and, and, and launched, can you run through that for the guys, What uh, how that all happened? Uh, yeah, so it, I, I, it's called the Star Trust. Yeah. It's T-A-R-R, trust.org. Throw that in, may as well. Throw it in. And, Throw it, in. and, and uh, <laughs> it was a charity that was started, I'll say by me. It was by me, of course. It was my idea, and I've set it up, and, but it's not run by me. I, I mean, I chair it, and I'm heavily involved every, daily, but... As you mentioned, Tracy, my sister and Rosie and my brother-in-law and my wife. I mean, you, family, yeah. you know, fam family keep the, th keep the thing going. But it was set up for me. It was definitely set up to help me, not to help others. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good starting point. Probably a good starting point, actually, for something. But, you know, what? I, my, as I said, my dad died young. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, if he'd lived to 100, it would have been young for me. But, you know, he hadn't quite hit 60 and, and, and that, was, you know, that was too young for me to lose him. He was, he was my best friend. Yeah. And I, I, I was supporting my mum, I was supporting my sister, supporting my... At the time I had one child and my wife and, and, and everyone. I mean, I was getting phone calls daily, literally yeah. phone calls daily and, um, about dad. And uh, so I was fine and that was wonderful for me to, 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 after we lost him, still be engaging about him so much. But I wasn't facing my loss. Yeah. And I found myself bit by bit not I was finding it harder to to come out of that that um, seriousness of it all. I even started to drink a bit and I'm not a drinker. Yeah. You know, I am. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not a drinker. Silly thing to say. Of course, I have a drink. I like a drink. Yeah. But I remember I remember one day coming home from work and Sharon saying to me, wow, that's early for you to drink. And I'm like. It's, it's just a glass of wine darling she's like yeah but it's not there's no glass yeah and i was like wow shit wow. that was not me i mean we're not me i yeah. i was literally what can i grab onto to keep me going and keep me smiling throughout yeah and help everyone out and i and i decided i had to do something positive i had to be really positive so that that was on a friday night that conversation with sharon and it was a few other things that happened anyway but on the Saturday over dinner, I, I asked my sister and my brother-in-law round, and I said, you know what, I need to do something really positive to make me think of dad and not be sad, because he yeah. wasn't sad. I just needed to be happy. Yeah. And I said, the only way I can think of doing that is to do something in his, in his name. I said, so we had no money. I mean, money wasn't, um, wasn't, uh, wasn't flowing. My business at the time was, was suffering badly because I would spent many years looking after my dad and take my eye off the ball. So... Yeah. I was worried about losing my house, let alone keeping the business at that point. Yeah, it, was all, it, was, it, was, it was tough times. Yeah, but... and, I, and I just figured at that point, the best thing I could do was be positive and help other people and do it in dad's name. Yeah. And that was it. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'd actually borrowed some money for the company. I borrowed £20,000 for my business. I had a business which at the time was about 16, is that right? Maybe 15, 16 years old. Yeah. Um, and it was a it was a small business, and I borrowed twenty thousand from the bank to get me out of this hole I dug myself into. And I was going to buy new computers for the staff and desks and all this gump. And and I just said, you know what? If I, to, to keep my business is a separate conversation, what yeah. I need to do is go to work again, do what I did when I started it, pick up a phone book, make some calls, and sell some insurance. I mean, you know, that's how I started the business. So if I'm going to go out of business, that's the way to save it. Computers and desks is all a red herring. I said, let's pick, go all go out, buy local newspapers, and let's just give this money away. I've got £20,000. Let's give it away, and let's pretend it was left in Dad's will. There was nothing in Dad's will, bless him, but yeah. let's pretend that was it. Yeah. Let's just give it away and yeah. see what happened. Yeah. And, in, and interesting things happened from there. So there was no plan. Right. I decided Dad was just wonderful. I thought, what would he like? He'd like to help children. He was a great family man. So we just opened the newspaper and I, the first thing I found was a local, uh, a local lady who was setting up a school in Tanzania, random of all things. Right. And she, she'd had funding and she'd lost it. And she needed, I think it was like three and a half thousand pounds at the time to finish this, to open this school over there. Yeah. So I literally just got hold of the Argus, got her number, phoned her up and said, if you want to come over the office, I'll give you a check, which is how you did it in those days. It was checks, of course. <laughs> yeah. So I gave her a check. She, I mean, it, it like changed, her, changed her life. She could, their school opened. And I said, I want my dad's name on the, on the school. 
So they've got this school in Tanzania with my dad's name on it. Really ridiculous. Awesome. Anyway, we carried on giving the money away. We were looking for things to do. It wasn't a charity. It wasn't a registered charity. It was just a let's help children smile, which is what we decided to do in my dad's name. At the end of the year, when, I, when we look back on what we'd done in that year, we'd given away the £20,000 and we'd helped. It was about 400 children in different groups, some individual children all around the world. Yeah. Our home city, as far out as Africa and Russia. Oh, I mean, weird, 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 weird. <laughs> yeah. But what was really weird was that when we looked at the numbers, we'd given away £20,000 and we had almost £20,000 left. Wow. And, and, and I hadn't expected that. And what was happening was, as we were giving money away, people were seeing what we were doing <laughs> and, and giving us money to give away. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of looked, and I didn't really pick that up at the time. It didn't, it didn't really register with me. Yeah. Of course, I had then had a dilemma because now I've got basically, it's one thing giving away my money, but now I've got £20,000 of other people's money. <laughs> and I, I, what do you do with that? I, I have to give that away. I, mean, I have no choice. Yeah, cool. So it was at that point I thought maybe I should grow up and maybe we'll, we'll form a charity and yeah. give it away. And then we can get, you know, get all the other benefits of a charity. You can talk about it properly then to people. Yeah. yeah. And so we set we set up the, you know, what's now the Star Trust. Um, so this is what, 13 years, 13 years yeah, now. Yeah, 13 years has been um, I, I, uh, People were doing, people were running marathons for us. A friend of mine, a solicitor, cycled across Death Valley um people doing cake bakes i mean big and small things we, we set up my sister got involved with rosie and set up a sort of an events department in the charity and they yeah. put on our first ever ball which was actually a barn dance a proper old-fashioned barn dance Brilliant. and i think it netted two thousand pounds it was like wow that's gonna help a child yeah and one thing i decided on day one i mean this was an absolute thing for me on day one yeah. this is not knocking other charities we all must do what we can do i just decided whatever happened I, I must never make money out of this. So I'll never take anything out. None yeah. of nobody, I mean, any staff who work in there, I'll cover their costs. So from my company, somehow I'll find the money to pay the running costs of the charity. Yeah. So whatever we raise, we give out. And that was just my thing. And, and we've maintained that for 13 years. So by the sort of the third year, or sec, two and a half years in, um, we, we were bringing in some money, we were helping some kids, but I wanted to, I thought, I'm going to do something big. Let's, let's see if we can put the charity on the map. It's just me, I guess. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So, all in. Uh, and I, I, all in. I live in Brighton, um, as you know, right by the yeah, coast. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, and beautiful place. Beautiful, Brighton, beautiful. beautiful as well. It's fabulous, isn't it? And, yeah, and yeah. Uh, um, I thought I'd try and raise some money for the charity. I, I, I had tried to run a marathon at the time, but I have arthritis and Crohn's disease. Mm. And I was getting five, six miles in and my legs were going, my stomach was going. I've had them since a child. I'm not moaning about it. It's just the reality. And um, I, I, was found, I found I couldn't run more than, you know, five, six miles. And I was always running down the seafront. So I was kind of looking out at the sea thinking, well, if I can't run, I'll swim. And I wasn't a swimmer. So um, I thought I'm going to learn to swim and I'll swim to France. And we'll, we'll see how that goes. And uh, uh, my next bit was as you do, you know, as you do. <laughs> well, as <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it was no plan. No, no, there no. There was no plan. There was literally, there's an idea. Let's take the first step. I mean, yeah, that was yeah, literally yeah. it. And literally, the first step was into the water. The first step was into the water. And um, yeah. I found a, you know, look, well, first step was look on the internet, look up channel swimming. I found there was an association. You have to book a, a boat two years ahead because they're so busy and there's so yeah. few boats. So I booked it there and then, literally. <laughs> I, I found a local swimming club, a sea swimming club contacted them and literally a, a week after that ridiculous conversation with myself i walked into the sea lily white scrawny petrified um 10 degree c as it was at the time and never had such a worst day of my life i thought i was mm -hmm. going to die and bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. Okay. of course you know i went back the next day and and, and I, I completed that it two years later but that journey of, of that two years of learning to swim and the training and stuff really took the charity on People yeah. were looking, going, this is ridiculous. She's a non-swimmer. You can't do it. And you, you know, the, whether I could do it or not was, actually was irrelevant. It was, a, it was a, the effort being put in. Yeah. And, it's and the journey, I suppose, is what they say. It's the journey. It's all about that. It yeah. really is. Yeah. And the people I met, I can't even, uh, who I wouldn't have met, yeah. the experiences I had, um, it changed my life. I mean, beyond everything. Yeah. So once again, 
I got everything out of this. <laughs> you know, that's kind of the secret to all this. You've got to get as much as you give, I guess. I got so yeah, much out it, of it. We also say, Rob, you can't give what you haven't gotten. It's got to be, you know, and if you haven't got it yourself, then you can't give it. If you didn't, no, no, no. That, then the charity it, wouldn't, have, wouldn't have catapulted. I think, I think it has to be, I think everything has to be a deal, good deal for everyone. Yeah, Business, win -win. charity, relationships. If one person gets everything and one person gets nothing, it's, it's a very bad deal. Yes. So the charity benefited massively. I mean, we we raised uh, uh, just shy of a hundred thousand pounds. And when you think of a charity which was started on a bank loan, that was just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Um, during that journey, um, because I was in such a positive frame of mind and I was doing something so positive for the for the charity and for the local kids, I started mixing with new people, new businesses, and all of a sudden I landed the biggest ever uh, insurance uh, scheme. When I'd been in business a long time at this point, yeah. I'd landed one that transformed my business. And I went from almost going out of business and losing in my house to quadrupling my business. So again, awesome. is, is, is it a surprise that that being positive brings that in? I don't know. Probably not. I mean, it's no, just it's quite you amazing. Know you know, I'm a firm believer of it. I think whatever, if you put positivity out, you'll get positivity back. There's it, no about it, it. It, it was quite amazing. The year I took that on, I got my biggest ever case. So there you yeah. go. That's awesome. So, you know, we've been going now 13 years. The charity is supports young people still. And it's we've changed it a number of times during its 13 years because you've got to evolve and you've got to work out what you're good at. Yeah. But the mantra has always been the same. Uh, help young people be the best that they can be. So we, we champion young people in sport, art and education and w w with with uh, scholarships, with counselling with opening our all, all opening our um, little black books and who can we introduce you to yeah sometimes you know what and it doesn't matter if they don't become the next olympian or the next educator or the next x factor singer saying that we've got olympians we've got kids who've gone to the yeah. olympics we've got kids who are now um, head teachers i mean yeah. what's that about mad well, kids who are uneducated i've been lucky incredible enough. i play golf against one of you guys you look after yeah We've helped with the goal. Yeah. I um, luckily I loved that night I came to when the, you know the last one we had pre-COVID. Uh, the, the and you met Nathan. The yeah, yeah, yeah amazing. Awesome. And then I met I met another one as well. Where were they? Uh, I met, I've met three or four. And I've oh, just you've met three or four of our young stars. Yeah, they've been They're such in, an inspiring, a incredible. But you know, so we've had some amazing successes in terms of what they've achieved. However, some of our best successes are the ones who just are able to stand up straight with their back straight and their chin out and they crack on and they I, weren't given that opportunity no, before us. Mind, when, I, when I went on that golf day and the lad was on the golf tee, I spoke to his dad, his dad was in tears talking mm. to me. And I just, at that point, I was with three of the gentlemen when we were playing the hole. And I just said, look, fellas, this is what the charity is all about. Right. And the, the dad was explaining what you'd done for them. And that bit there in a nutshell was exactly what it's about. And for me, that's, you know, he just said we couldn't afford to put him in. They supported us through it. And, and, he, and the lads, and I was just like, oh, this is just such a brilliant Yeah, job. it's amazing, isn't it? It's really amazing. Oh, so, you know, 13 years, we've, we've, we've gone from a £20,000 bank loan on day one, yeah. which I didn't tell anyone about when I did it. It didn't even tell my <laughs> wife. And she wasn't best pleased when she found out a few years later. <laughs> but, um, but, but bless her, she's so supportive. Yeah, but we've gone from, you know, we've gone, we've gone from, you know, a, a twenty thousand pound bank loan to raising and giving out over a million pounds. Yeah. We've helped over four and a half thousand young kids, and awesome. and uh, and all for, all because of, of and this is the weird thing, of course, all because my dad died. Yeah. That's really weird because I would have him back, obviously, mm. in less than a heartbeat. Yeah. But you look at what we achieved because we lost him, and and that that that's a weird. Uh, it's a weird one, but actually, it's a bit like you know, you talk about legacy, and you know, ultimately, one that's the what you I, I would have thought the actual question is that's what you've got from your your dad is that giving yeah. mentality, isn't it? Yeah, I guess it is absolutely right, absolutely you know, right. Be, yeah, I mean, I just think the charity is, a, is an awesome charity, and I like I said, thank you, fully involved in yeah, it. Yeah, bless your heart, thank you. But it, going back to um, I'd love to just pick up on the the, the swim in the channel. You know, I'm an avid. I, no, I love to swim in my, my wetsuit. <laughs> You're getting in a wetsuit, though. I mean, that's not swimming. Is that's not sea swimming? Come on. Me and Sasha and <laughs> horses, so there's no toys about that. But talk us through because there's less people that have swam the channel. I, I saw this on your on the I, you know, and I read into it then. The less people have swam the channel than Everest, meant it says. Uh, talk us through yeah. the journey of that. Talk us through because it's something that I'd always 
look at as a, as a challenge. Um, but I'd love to see how you, you know, yeah, it was one foot into the water, but talk us through the actual sort of build up to it. Okay. I mean, it, it, you had to, to do that. And I didn't take it on. No, if I'd have done what you did in research, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. I mean, let's be clear on that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm but, either one, mate. I'm, I think we're very similar. I don't plan, I'll just jump in and do. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sasha would Sasha would want to know, uh, bless his cotton socks. When we jump in the sea, he knows the nautical, he knows. Yeah, the, absolutely. I don't know anything. I just jump in with him. I put on a pair of trunks, put on a hat, and I jump in and I go, Where am I going to end up today? Where am I going? Absolutely right. We can't change, <laughs> can we? Um, what part of am I get into? Yeah. So, I mean, the I had a lot of challenges to deal with outside of it. Yeah. Which. which which in some respects took my mind off it, which was probably really helpful. So at the time we, 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 I'd, we'd moved house three years before, and yeah. it was always an idea to knock it down and rebuild it. So we were doing that, we'd knock the house down and we were rebuilding it. And I was, I'd rented a house around the corner for Sharon and, and, the, and the kids. Yeah. The kids were young. So we were building a house there. The kids were very young. Um, um, Asha was, I think, three. Right. And we had twins who uh, were about eight months. Mm. So we had we had three under three in kids um, building a house. Obviously, I had my business, which I was at that point, you know, was still in that danger zone. So I was yeah. trying to fight that through and keep that going. And and we just set up the charity. So I, I balls, you know, there's, a few balls there. <laughs> you, you know what? There's, there's the old adage, which is so true, which is yeah. if you want something done, give it to a busy person. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because you just you just if you're busy, you just grab other things. You don't yeah. think. Yeah. So, you know, taking on the channel, I didn't give any thought to it other than at the time, as I said, I, I couldn't couldn't run a marathon, which I have done a new, numerous times since, I have numerous, to say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So swimming swimming the channel actually made me got rid uh, helped me with all my illnesses as well. So I've done lots of other stuff since then because of that. So awesome. the benefits have been incredible, incredible. Yeah. But it was it was literally, first of all get in and swim i mean just it was as simple as that yeah. and um the beach off of brighton by brighton palace pier um it's quite an unpredictable beach and mm -hmm. that was the only beach i knew at that point and uh, that's when i started in um and and so i started with a very challenging sea yeah uh, temperatures at the time it was april so they were actually sub 10 degrees at that point they yes. were probably about seven i think if i look back so it was cold um it was dark and it and it was rough yeah. And so, you know, it li literally was fight for your life. So you didn't get a chance to what with all the the the, the danger of it and, and, and the fear, you didn't really get a chance to think much. You, you literally had to go in and, and fight. Yeah. So, again, I think that was quite good for me because it didn't give me a chance to reflect. Mm. Um, I was always quite I kept myself fit up until that point. But yeah. my arthritis affected me. I was on and off crutches a lot and walking sticks. My Crohn's disease I had Crohn's since I was a kid. And it, it, very debilitating and, and can yeah, yeah, suck the energy from you um and um so again the, the, these things I, I always kept fit so i could carry on and yeah. not be brought down by them i'm not one for moaning about it I can't be doing that nonsense no, no, I've never so I, i'd always no I, I just I can't be doing that so i always kept oh. fit so when i started the channel I, I i had a level of fitness but nowhere near what i needed but i had a at least it wasn't new to me exercising I, I met um, some super people in Brighton Swimming Club. Um, one of them, Fiona, um, who was an ex-channel swimmer herself. Right. She, she was the oldest lady to ever swim the channel when I'd met her. So she was super experienced. And yeah. she trained a few people and she was like, well, I'll, I'll give it a go. Um, she wanted to get into training channel swimmers. So she said, well, I'll give you my time for free and let's see what we can do. Oh, brilliant. Um, it was amazing. I went from literally from swimming. I went from never swimming because I wasn't a swimmer. I was a I was a splasher on a holiday in a pool. Yeah. I went from never swimming to doing five uh, sea swims a week, um, three, pool, three pool sessions a week. Yeah. Now, the pool sessions, though, were big. So I started off with sort of I think the, the, the lightest one she ever gave me when I first started was an hour. Right. Now, when you're a non-swimmer and you're in a pool and they say swim for an hour, that's pretty much saying, well, look, you're, you know, you're 40 years of age, stop when you're 45. I yeah. mean, to me, it was like, what are you talking about? An hour. I mean, yeah, I'm going to yeah. do two lengths, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> by, by the time the channel swim itself came up, I was in the pool regularly doing, um, on a Tuesday, I would do eight hours. And on uh, Wednesday, I would do seven hours. That was a regular thing. 
from an Ironman or from a person that's done a bit of, you know, I've done nothing of that distance. How, what do you do mentally in that pool for eight well, hours? In, you know what? Go? It's really interesting. It's really interesting. So, I mean, of course, around all of that as well, I was, I was training three times a day. Yeah. So I was doing cycling, running, a lot of core work, a lot right. of weight. Um, you know, you've got to strengthen everything about it. So the swim was maybe a swimming was like maybe a third of my total wow. week's training. And so you know, I'd leave training in the pool, then all this on top. Yeah, yeah. And running the business wow. and running the charity and having the three kids. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. life was you look oh, back and you go, that wasn't me, really. You must have been but up at three, four in the morning. I was I would go to I'd go to I had I used to go to uh to Virgin, uh pulled up by Falma. It was wasn't called it was called a sporter at the time, and they were yeah. unbelievably supportive. And they would open up at um four o'clock for me. Wow. So I'd get in the pool at four AM. I would swim for eight hours, I'd then go to work. Um, would never work beyond maybe six, half six. So I want to get home to see the kids and then go home and start again. But going back to your question of what do you think about? So I found what I used to do was store, store things up to think about. Right. Because I like to deal with things in my head yeah. before I deal with them. Yeah. So if I've, got, if I've got a problem with someone yeah. or someone's got a problem with me, before I address them, and I'm, I'm very good at confrontation, not negatively so, but if someone's got a problem, I, I knock on their door and go, let's talk about it. Yeah. You know, I, it's just how, how I was brought up. Yeah. So I would store that, that thing in my head. And when you, when you think I'm running a business with a number of staff, literally tens of thousands of customers and running yeah. a charity, there are issues constantly. I mean, constant cool. issues. So I'd store all that stuff up. I also, um, I like to write. So I, I, I was writing a new play at the time. And I wanted to know how that was going to go. I was trying to work out the, the ins and outs and the movements on the stage and all different stuff I was doing. Yeah. So I'd store these things up and I'd be like, right, for the first hour, I'm just going to swim, get my rhythm right, get my breathing right. Hour two and hour three, I'm going to deal with Seiko, my insurance and mortgage business. Hour four and five, I'll probably deal with the trust. Yeah. And then the last couple of hours, I'll just I'll, I'll talk about the issues I've got, my, my, the play I'm writing. I'll think about Sharon and the three kids. Is the house going to be finished? So I'd go to the pool with all these things. But Brilliant. what would happen? No, but what would happen was it was really frustrating. <laughs> I'd get to the pool. I'd get through my first hour. I'd yeah. start thinking an hour two. And all of a sudden, I'd look at the clock and seven hours have gone. And I'd be like, bugger. I haven't covered <laughs> all this stuff. The other ones are dead yet. No. And then the problem was some of the stuff I stored away to cover was important stuff I had to have sorted out for the next day. Right. And there were times, it was really weird, there were times I was going to the pool and Fiona was saying to me, you need to do a four-hour swim today. Yeah. You know, you've done an eight and a seven last week. We're cutting it down, an easy one this week. You can do a four-hour Wednesday, three-hour Thursday. Fine, yeah. no problem. I'd get in, I'd do my four hours, having still not covered the stuff, so I'd carry on swimming yeah. just so I could think about the stuff I'd planned. And I'd end up doing another two hours just to cover these arguments and these problems. <laughs> It's bonkers. It's really that's bonkers. Good. I tell you what, because you can't. I've you always go into this... to ask you about the training program because mm -hmm. it is like that four to eight hours. I mean, even from someone that does a couple of hours in the pool, that that is still that is going some. I mean, that is going some. But, but, but what happens is you can you know you you physically your body just keeps going. Yeah, it does. It just does. Yeah. So it's about your head. It's only yeah. about your head. So. If you can go into this sort of uh, this meditative state, yeah, um, actually time flies. You don't even, there is no time. There yeah. literally is no time, and that's what I found. The Are only time for a, I know you're doing the Iron Man and things now, so I know we're going to um, yeah. the third story in a minute. But does your mind still? Do you still process the train in the same way? Absolutely, I still yeah. now. So I did a I did a, a half Iron Man two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, you did. Um, yeah, I saw that. Awesome effort that was, mate. Brilliant. Thank you. And, and uh, but I did the bike on the spin bike on the uh, on the turbo it's hard. because it was it was it was uh, minus two outside. And I looked out the window when I when I got back from the swim, and I was like, oh my god, it's literally icy, and I I'm so clumsy. I thought I just can't do ninety yeah, k yeah, outside on this. So so it was a six hour bike ride on the turbo. Uh, well, actually, it wasn't. No, it wor worked out from what, six. The whole thing was six hours. The, the, that day was three hours on the turbo. Yeah. But I did exactly the same thing. I got on there with, with ideas of what I'm going to think about. Right. You just and it was a sack. Hmm? Yeah, that's it's the same cycle. process. I, I actually, when we did that under K, I think the three hours stationary yeah. is harder than outside by a country mile. 
It is. It's really hard. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I've done sort of six six hour pluses on on that thing. Yeah, that makes and, sense. But, oh, that is effort. but I go there with exactly the same thing. I go there with things to think about. I'm writing another. I'm writing a book at the moment, so I've got a lot of stuff in my head. Yeah. It's great thinking time. I don't answer the phone. The kids leave me alone. Yeah. I shut the door, or I'll put on my shoes and go for a run and do a big run, and, and I, I can go into my head and I can just work through. So for, so for people, people that don't know, every day, like I know I have a, I always say well done because I know getting up in the morning, but you every morning, five days a week, whatever it fails, you're yeah. down in that sea and you're in, aren't you? Half past six, every single morning, January yeah. to January, rain, snow, wind, storms. And I'm always there at the edge in my trunk. Sometimes you can't get in because she's she can be a beast to the sea. She doesn't let yeah. you in. But if, if that happens, I lie down at the edge and get wet. But yeah, I'm down there sit half six every morning. Yeah. Um, and and that, that talking about mindset, I mean, we're going to go, we haven't even got the 30 years of Sego yet, but <laughs> mindset wise, you know, that yeah. is, what is the reason, the main reason why you do that? I know there's a benefit for Crohn's and there's all sorts of benefits with it, but why, there must be a reason why you go down every morning. You know, there, there's, uh, I, yeah, I, I've been, I get asked this a lot, of course, and I think I give yeah, a different answer every time. I think I give a different answer every time, but I think there's lots of reasons. <laughs> Of course, there's the health benefits. I have to say, yes. sea swimming helps my Crohn's, full stop the end, and helps my arthritis. It's it's almost biblical in, in that sense. Yeah. Um, so there is that. There's also the getting up, being out with nature. There's mm. that. There's the whole mental issue. You know, when you when you live a busy life, or, or even a quiet life, probably, you know, your mind, your mind is a negative thing. It just is. And I would challenge anyone to say it isn't. Your mind will take you to a negative place. And it's our job to turn that around, of course. Yeah. It, being in the sea does does help you with that because you can't think of anything else. The waves are coming. It's cold. You can't think of anything. So it, it does close your mind. It's a, it's a form of, uh, of meditation for me. Yeah. But there's also another thing which makes me go down there. And that's my guilt. My guilty brain. Interesting. Talk because my guilt, my guilty brain says to me, you swim every day at half six. That's what my brain says to me. It's what you do now. I've now yeah. I've carried on doing it since I since I finished the channel in 2012. So we're now what another nine years on. So I've been doing it 13 years now. Yeah. So my so it's the thing I do, and people know it's what I do. Yeah, so yeah, I'm known yeah. as the, the guy who goes down the beach at half six. <laughs> so yeah. if I'm in bed and it's six o'clock. And I roll over and Sharon's fast asleep and the bed's warm and the lights are off and the kids are all safe in bed next door. And I can hear the wind and the rain outside. Yeah. I roll over and I go, no, not this morning. No one cares. It mm. doesn't actually matter if I go down the beach and no one actually cares. Mm. And then five minutes later, I'm up and I'm dressed and I'm going down the beach yeah. and my brain is going, see, you need to do this. So I've. I've got all these actual reasons why I do it, but yeah. I think if none of those existed, the truth is I don't know why I do it. Yeah. I think I just have this, this thing which just gets me up in my brain and says, this is what you do. Yeah, <laughs> so no, I, I don't know. This, I mean, since lockdown, I've been up and I've been out and I've, you know, in, a, in the nicest way, I have been using you as a sort of quite a, a springboard to get myself in a position where I've never been an early morning person. I've never had a routine and I've, I think a lot of it as well. I mean, I, I can only vouch for the last year, but mm. you know, this routine in it, isn't it? and getting up. I think that's people, right. You know, you get I think that's right. Because I think it's so easy to not do stuff. Yes. Um, and I think for me, you know, I get up, I have my swim half six. Depending on the time of year, I might be in there for two hours in the summer. At this time of year, March, it's fifteen minutes, and that's because yeah. it's cold. Yeah, better. It but that fifteen minutes. When I then come out the beach, off, off out the sea, sling my tracksuit on, jump in the car, drive home. Yeah. I then go to the gym. I've got a gym at home because yeah. I'm up now. So it's now, it's now half seven and I'm up. Yeah. So what do I do? So I'll do 90 minutes in the gym or two hours yeah. in the gym. Then I'll come to work. So by the time I get to work at nine, half nine, actually, I've already done three, four hours of training and my body feels good. My mind's clear and yeah. I can literally crack on. Yeah. in your words yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and the day and if i don't do that i, I i'm i'm sluggish yeah but well, that's another reason as well isn't it? so let's go back to eight hours you've got the eight hours training you had that yeah. time where you did five hours and four hours what, yeah what, what done from there well it, you know what that's pretty much it constantly it literally yeah. was it was literally 
um, it was a constant battle with that um, yeah. of swimming, cycling, running, core work. I was training about probably most weeks, 21, 22 times a week. And each session was hard. Yeah, each session was hard. My biggest problem, though, wasn't that. Because I'm like you, John, you know, wind us up, set us off and we'll yeah. do it. Yeah. Right. And so actually Fiona saying to me, do eight hours a day was wonderful because I didn't have to think about doing eight hours. She yeah. said, do eight hours. Off I went. It was, it yeah. was simple. Yeah. So the training side of it was very structured. My, my biggest problem was, was uh, nutrition. Right. So it's a, I'll tell you a story. Have I got time for one quick, very yeah, quick story on this? Yeah, of course quick, quick story. It was my first, it was early on, and it was my first swim where Fiona said, well, we're going to swim from the Palace Pier to the West Pier and back. Yeah. Um, for me, that was monumental. It was not, it's not a huge swim. You've done it. It's probably yeah, it's a couple of miles, 2K, sorry, a couple yeah, of K. It's, it's about that, isn't it? And back it is. Okay. So, um, I also was angsty because she's a, an unbelievable runner, and we were going with another guy who was swimming the channel that year. Right. So he was an unbelievable swimmer. So I'm, the, I'm the, the, the poor relation at the back for sure. So I was, yeah. I was, an, I was anxious about that. But it was, yeah. you know, this was Friday night. She said, right, tomorrow morning, you get up early, you have a bowl of porridge, see you at the beach at half six, and we're going to swim to the West Pier and back. Fine. So I, I can't remember how old I would have been then, 40, 41, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm an adult with a business, with young children. Yeah. And you know what kept me awake all night? It wasn't any of the angst I've got in life. It wasn't the fact that I was going to have to swim, my longest swim at the time, 2K yeah. swim in the sea with these two exceptional swimmers. For me, what kept me awake the whole night was having to get up and eat a bowl of porridge. <laughs> now, that is just utterly ridiculous, I know, <laughs> to hear it and to say it. Yeah. But that kept me awake all night because right. I've always had an issue with food because of my Crohn's disease. F food right. has always equaled pain. Just yeah. always has since I was a child. I've had it since I was a, a um, primary school. Oh, yeah. Um, and um, so I've always had a bad relationship with food. I'm one of these people. If you could just give me a pill in the morning and that takes me through the day, I'm, I'm good you're as fine. Yeah, yeah. I see what so, you're doing. I, <laughs> <laughs> so I spent the whole night worrying about porridge. And of right. course, when I got up in the morning and I went down to the kitchen, my anxiety was so high, mm. I got through maybe a third of the bowl. Right. And that was a, a, the porridge defeated me. The swim I, I nailed. Jeez. That's, that's nuts, isn't it? And, and that, that continued throughout my whole training, where she, she was pushing me with the eating. I was losing so much weight. Yeah. Um, and, and it's dangerous. It's incredibly dangerous. I had a yeah, few times really. when we were in the sea in cold water doing six, six or seven hour swims in the sea, and I would go, I would be completely gone. She'd have to pull me in. Because I didn't know where I was. Calories. I mean, that eight-hour swim alone, the amount of calories that burned. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah. To, haven't you got to put weight on in that? Yeah, moment? you're meant to put weight on. You're meant to get yeah. to do the channel. You have to get big. I didn't. I, I, when I started the channel, um, I was under nine stone. Wow. Um, um, it was ridiculous because a big. I just couldn't. And I, at my lowest, I got down to seven during my training, and the doctors had to get involved, and you can't really? do it, and uh, they had to give me uh, medication to make me eat, all yeah. this stuff. What I found, it's interesting, actually, I'm coming off the subject, but on that no, no, subject, no, no, it's right, it's really, it, it, it's really interesting. It, um, interestingly, something. since I since I finished the channel, I've, I've done some other things. I've done some long bike rides up Le Mont Ventoux and, and, and I've done some uh, Ironman and triathlons and, and run marathons and stuff. What I decided to do with all of them was ignore all the advice. <laughs> Bin it. Yeah. Because we're all different. Yeah. Every one of us is different. I don't care who you are, there isn't a training plan that will suit everyone. Yeah. And I don't, I don't need the, nu the, the, um, the nutrition you need when you train. I just don't. Yeah. So when I did the half Ironman uh, a couple of weeks ago, or, uh, last Saturday, and I'm not saying it's clever, mm. I didn't have any, um, anything. Right. I got up in the morning, uh, started at quarter to six, did the event, took me six hours and five minutes, Came home, had a shower, then I had something to eat and drink. I was going to say, now, I didn't not, after then, you must have felt, you know, I suppose the no, problem, like you say, yeah, no, could have, could have gone, could have carried on, could have carried on, could have carried on, yeah. What I did was I tried, I had to, I was buying into her training plan at the channel, yes. and it wasn't my training plan, right, and I've learned that. 
I've learned that now. And I'm not saying it's a clever thing to do, and I don't advocate that. No. And of course, to do a full Ironman, I have to take something on, but I don't have to take on what you take on. No, no, that's it. But the thing is, it's interesting you say that because, yeah, we are all different. I'll, I'll give you a, I'll top and tail with a little story of my own. But when I did the, with the Ironman myself, the, we all started on the starting line, and the guys, um, they all started again, their watches to start. And I got my Casio watch out, all right? And I pressed start yeah. on my Casio, and the guy next to me goes, What? What are you doing that for? He said, how would you know when you need to eat and stuff? I said, mate, my legs will tell me. Absolutely. Well, tell me. I don't need anything else to say. I've got, no. I've got enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So guilty. But Listen to your body. Yeah. You know, you, you know your body. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, the, the, you know, the channel, I, 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 if I was to do it again, which I would never would do again, I would follow my own on that because all my anxiety wasn't yeah. about the training. The training yeah. took me away from screaming children, building a house, running a charity, running a business. Actually, I look back and seven, eight hour training, I'd like to do it now. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I you no, 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 absolutely, mate. I bet you would. And I think for those reasons, you know, mm. you find the time a... as well because you've always had to find the time. Yeah, I've never slept a lot. No. You know, I sleep maybe four hours a night. I've never slept more than that ever. As a kid, oh. I used to do less. So, you know, I, I, I've always, I've always, yeah, four hours is good for me. And yeah. um, again, so I can get up. Everyone, isn't it? Because yeah, totally. there's a big thing at the moment with uh, the sleep patterns and you should get seven mm. to eight hours. Yeah. I'm yeah, not yeah. seven to eight hours either, mate. I'm not. I'm a six hour. No, I, I, I don't know how you would do it. It's impossible to me. But <laughs> also in that time, I, f I fill up that time. Yeah. I write, yeah. I read, I, yeah. I exercise. So it's yeah. valuable time for me. Um, yeah, but that's the training in the channel. You're always going. Yeah, yeah totally, totally, that's totally. Is that something you've always had? Always had. Ever always since you were younger. So how was your school I think days? I... Interestingly, how did you get on in school? I know I'm going back a bit. Badly. Is it... Badly. Yeah, yeah, I left school I, uh, with a, I got an O-level grade B in cooking, home Brilliant. economics. I've seen, your actually, I've seen your photos, they look great, mate. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Um, <laughs> that's the only thing, I, that's the only exam I turned up for. Yeah. But um, I just, I wasn't engaged at school. And, and I think it was because the teachers weren't engaged with me. I think it wasn't a great school, but the teachers weren't engaged with me. But, but fair, looking back, I wasn't engaged with them. And they had yeah. a class of 40 kids. So, you know, if, if I'm not engaged, why would they engage with me? So I, I didn't bother, but I spent a lot of time working. My dad was a bookmaker on course at the horses and the dogs. My that's what my, my whole family did. I, I was the first one not to do that. Right. So I used my, I used to go to the uh, the horses and work for my dad on, on the race course when I was sort of seven and eight years of age, instead of going to school. So um, it's interesting because a lot of the entrepreneurs I've we've been on the podcast same sort of journey. Entrepreneur find it very you know hard to sit down and get on with things and just find their time being you know very productive because you know that's your you've got you make time in the day but you're very productive in when you sit down and do things aren't you you know i think some people are very academic yeah and some people are very practical i mean practical i, I couldn't put a shelf up i'm not practical in that sense but no, um <laughs> but um <laughs> but I'm, i want to get on with stuff you know yeah. it's like if, if if as i said to you you know if you've got some writing to do pick up a pen and write yeah. If you've got to run for a bus, put on your shoes and run for the bus. If you're going to swim, get in the water. And to, to sit at a desk and be told stuff constantly without being allowed to practice it was hard for me. Yeah, so someone would, someone would say to me, learn this. I'd say, sure, but why? Yeah. And they would just say, learn this. And because you couldn't tell me why, I didn't want to do it. No, no, no. And, and I think I'm, I'm still like that now. I question if someone says do this or do that or go here, go there, I'm absolutely cool to do it. I want, just want to know why. Yeah, yeah. Why are we going to do that? Why are so we going to do that? Let's finish, let's finish that story off regarding the channel. The day of the yeah. channel you went and did it then. Talk us through yeah. that day because that must have been a real tough day. Well, you know what? It didn't, it didn't happen the way I wanted it to happen. Right. So um, I failed before I succeeded. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I, um, um, I, I, you know, I did, I, I did my, I did an eight-hour swim, but I, I was pulled out of the water. Yeah. Um, uh, Fiona wouldn't let, wouldn't then let me, wouldn't let me get back in and do it because I was hypothermic. I didn't know where I was. My weight was so bad. My Crohn's, I, my weight was down to. So I trained for two years. Well, you heard what I did, and it was mad yeah, training. Yeah, cool. And my weight at that point was was under nine stone. And you're meant to, I mean, at my height, five eight, I should be probably fifteen stone to do that. Yeah, and I was under nine, mm -hmm. so they, they 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 medically they pulled me out, wouldn't let me do it. Yeah, um, I was beyond devastated. It was the first time I'd cried mm. since I'd lost my dad. Wow. Um, 
I mean, literally, I sat at the top of my garden. How much you would have put into it? Oh, it was astonishing. And, and I and I and I I thought, well, that's that. They won't let me do it. And I thought, well, I could. I, I know I can't put the weight on now. And I just know I never would be able to. It's just impossible. Yeah. So um, I I wallowed, self pity. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, guilt. All the, the emotions. Losing. It's that losing. All, all the emotions. Got over that in about half an hour. That's yeah. enough, isn't it? Don't need any more than that. No. Um, phoned up my friends at Brighton Swimming Club and went, you're a good swimmer. Have you ever swum the channel? No. Great. You're on my team. And I got a relay team up, phoned up the boat. We booked it. It was another eight months of training I had to do. But yeah. I had to change my training because a relay is completely different. And actually, there's as, there's as many failures on relays as there are on solos. If you look That's at the stats, good. relays are nuts um, because... If anybody doesn't do their hour, you go home. If anybody touches the boat, you go home. I mean, this, the rules are just so tight. Yeah. So I had to get a team together, which I did very quickly, of good sea swimmers. And, and um, we went out on a, on a force eight gale. And what you have to do is you have to jump in the sea, swim for an hour, climb back in. But you jump in, you swim for an hour, you stop. Someone jumps in behind you. If they jump in in front of you, you go home. Yeah. They jump in behind you. You then swim round them. You get on the boat. The moment you get on the boat, they start to swim. Right. That, that's the rules. Yeah. And then you just do an hour. They do an hour. You do an hour. They do an hour. And you just repeat. You just repeat until you, until you do it. Yeah. Um, and actually, it's very hard being on a, on a boat in the middle of the channel in a gale force when the boat's tipping left, right and centre. Waves are literally. And it's not a luxury yacht. It's a fishing boat. You're sitting on the back outside. Know. Yeah, and yeah. the sea's literally washing over you. You're just drenched. Yeah. And you're feeling sick. The boat's moving. It's easier in the water, is the truth. The, I the boat's I everywhere. Like shift in the water rather than on the boat. And then you, you get yourself wrapped up and then, you're, then your coach, Fiona, said, right, you're on next, Rob. And you're like, really? I've done two. I've got to now strip off again and jump in in the middle of the, the ocean. And yeah. I'm tired. I don't, want it. I, I don't think I want to get back in again. It's a, yeah. different, it's a really interesting, a different swim. But we went out that day. It was gale force four the whole way there and back. And yeah. there were um, nine relays went and three solos. One solo did it and, and only we were the only relay that made it. Wow. So it was, it was tough. How many in your team? Uh, five. Five of you. Uh, and it was tough, you know, th 13 hours. And, um, and that, yeah, that includes I spare, 13 hours. And, and uh, so, you know what? It was interesting, my journey, because I, I gave it a go as a soloist and I did all the training as a soloist did. And I, and, you know, eight hours in and I did everything I could, but it wasn't to be. And, and, and when I look back at that, that's OK as well. Yeah. I still completed my journey. Yeah. And I think every failure I've had in my life, of which there are numerous ones, yeah. every single one has taught me way more than any successes. I've, I don't think I've ever learned anything from a success. Yeah. So, so, you know what, I look back on it and uh, I'm quite cool with how it went. Yeah, well, it was a different that's, experience. That's actually you know. splitting because, I mean, congratulations for that full stop. Empathy for a, for, a, for a swimmer or an Ironman or whatever it is, I, I totally congratulate for that because that's an amazing effort. But the, you just mentioned the ups and downs. So obviously let's go maybe a bit into the, the business world. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, let's talk about the journey of Sega and how it started and yeah, okay. the, the ups and downs and the learnings. I mean, you said about the failures. I mean, obviously there's, there's got to be a lot of ups and downs in that journey. Of course. I mean, of course. Well, yeah, too many to, to discuss. Yeah. Um, I mean, I started the business through, through uh, not, not out of choice. It wasn't a, I want to be a businessman, an entrepreneur. I had no desire to do anything. I mean, I, you know, as I said, I left school with a cook, O level in cooking. There was no plan. Yeah. My dad said to me, you didn't go to school. You better go and get a job. And, and he was wonderful, my dad, but he was, you know, he was also knew when to be tough. And he said to me, um, go out, yeah, you know, go out today, get a job or don't come home. I mean, it's yeah. as simple as that. I, you know, yeah. you messed up at school. You didn't bother. So you have a choice now. So I literally I went out, I walked down a high street in Brighton. I walked into an office, the first office I came to, which I didn't know what they did or, or anything like that. I, then I just said to the guy, can I have a job? And he said, no, you know, so I said, fine, but can I make you tea? You don't have to pay me anything. My dad said, I've got to come home with a job. So I'll make you tea. That's, yeah. that's it. So he, he laughed and went, yeah, all right, you can make me tea. I'll give you a job. You can make me tea, but I'm not going to pay you anything. So I went home yeah. and I said to my dad, I've got a job. And he said, great, what are they paying you? And I said, well, that wasn't the, the deal. Yeah. You said get a job, mate. You didn't tell me that part. Didn't tell me that bit. So yeah, yeah. anyway, I, I stayed with this guy for about a week making him tea. And then he 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 got rid of someone he had taken on who was, wasn't performing and said, Do you want their job? 
it happened to be an insurance and mortgage brokerage, which right. meant nothing to me, of course. But I, I learned very quickly because I was interested. It, I just found it interesting. Don't know why. Yeah. Um, I wonder if I'd have walked into any business at that point, whether I would have had the same thing. Maybe it could have been anything. It just happened to be an insurance business. And I wait, I wait, stayed with him for a year. I then left him and moved to uh, another insurance broker and learned another facet of the industry for a year. And I did that for four years until I thought, right, you know, I'm 20 now. Um, I know more than everyone. Um, of course, I knew nothing. I knew less than everyone. But as a 20 year old kid, I was like, that's it. Our job's mm-hmm. done. Yeah. So I, um, I literally went home, um, bought a black ash filing cabinet from MFI. I had BT put a phone on at the end of my bed. Yeah. And I had a yellow pages because the internet wasn't didn't exist. You've got to remember there was no yeah. internet. No. There was no World Wide Web. <laughs> didn't exist. So there's no mobile phones then. Yeah, so I yeah, literally yeah. had a you know. So I good literally had a yellow days, pages. Good days. Yeah, yeah, right. So I just I made phone calls. I just phoned up people and said, "Hi, my name's Rob Star. I'm selling insurance." And I I think one out of every fifty calls let me carry on talking. And yeah. maybe there was maybe and maybe there was one out of every hundred bought something off me. <laughs> um, <laughs> But that's that was how, you, learned, you know, you would have learned the hard way. No, that's how you started a business. So, yeah, so and it wasn't, and I hadn't planned to start a business. As I say, I, I, I'd moved from four different brokers over a year. What I discovered was that I wasn't, I wasn't employable. Yeah. That was my problem. You know, after a year, a, a frustrating year of being told what to do without being explained. I mean, they'd explain why in terms of you do that process because that process does that, but it, but the end result didn't seem to matter. No one ever knew why they were doing stuff. Yeah. It was just processes. And that always frustrated me. It does now, right. as I say, the same thing. So I got to the point when I was 20, I just couldn't work for anyone. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, and, and, and probably my attitude was too bad to, to be employed. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I started Seiko. Um, right. And uh, again, no plan. But, you know, we're now 30 that's years. That's a common, that sounds like quite a common theme. But you've obviously right. been able to manufacture things over time. To happen. Well, what, what happens is, you know, you, you learn, you know, again, I think I, I was always brought up. My dad always was never worried about me making mistakes. He, he was yeah. only ever worried if I kept making the same ones. Yeah. That's, so and that's also That's a really good, powerful message as well. Isn't it? Any yeah. It's a massive, so I, massive, massive point. So I think that's what happened. I think I literally, every mistake I made, I just didn't repeat. And, and you yeah. learn, you just learn and you learn really quickly when you've got no money coming in. Yeah. Or when you or when you've got money coming in and then you've made a mistake that's cost you money. Mm. You know, you learn very, very quickly. Yeah. And I also realized that I wasn't that brilliant. I thought I knew everything and I wasn't. What I was was good with people. Yeah. And people would trust me, which was great and which was flattering. And I am trustworthy. So they were right to trust me. Yes. But so they wanted to put things in my hands, but that didn't mean I was capable of doing it. Yeah, yeah, and what yeah. I recognized very quickly was you've got to surround yourself with people who are better at this job than you are. Yeah. What I could do was I could orchestrate, you know, well, I'm not the, like the conductor and I can orchestrate the business. I can, I can get people to, in the right positions and I can get the music flowing. But that doesn't mean I'm as good as them at those instruments. And, yeah. and that's basically what happened. And I've sur- you've, you've met my staff. I surround yeah. myself with, with wonderful people. Yeah. They're wonderful. They, they all care. They're all honest and they're all exceptionally good at their job. And yeah. I pay them really well for that. Yes. Often, way, often more than I earn because I think they're worth it because they're doing a job I don't want to do and would struggle and, and they do it so well. Yeah, totally. And, o- and over, over 30 years, you know, I've, I've got you know, my staff here now. I mean, people come and go, but I've got, as you know, you know, 15 years, 14 years, 10, 10, 12. I mean, people have been yeah. with me a long time because we, we work together as a team, not as the, I'm not the boss and they're the staff. We, we work closely together. But yeah. the le- that was my lesson. My lesson for me was to know my limits. Yeah. You know what? If I can't swim the channel, get out and find a different way of getting across. Yeah. And, that, and that's what I've done with my business. Yeah, yeah, when it's got, when, when I couldn't find the way through, I got off and I found a different way through. And, that, and that's been what I've done. And I've changed the business a lot of times in that because the same thing applies to the market. The market yeah. changes. Yeah. Things you can't control. So don't try and control them. Yeah, I don't, I've seen you. I've seen you, you know, and you've mentioned it to me many a time. Is you can only control what you can control. So concentrate. I on live that. by it. Control the controllables and accept yeah. the uncontrollables. Yeah, because the that's massive. Always happen. Always happen. So, you know, I've changed what we do as a business numerous times. You know, we've got now an office in Hove, office in London. We've got an office in Johannesburg. I think you know, in <laughs> South Africa. Very random. 
we've got a very large mortgage. Our business has gone from insurance to mortgages. So we've got a very big mortgage business, South Africa's insurance. Now, I haven't planned any of that. Mm. What happened was different doors closed and different doors opened. I accepted that and I went with that and I found a way of working through that. Yeah. As again, just head down, dogged and bullying through. Wouldn't have worked. No. And, and you just learned so many lessons. You say about the non-plan, that's 30 years ago. If we'd have, yeah. you know, one of the questions oh. at the end is when you refer, would you ever seen yourself doing now? What you no. Doing? Are you kidding no. me? I mean, you know, yeah. I, I, I had a wonderful upbringing, wonderful yeah. upbringing. And we were, I would say we were middle class, no, no, you know, typical middle class family. Yeah. There wasn't money. I had holes in my trousers and holes in my shoes. Yeah. We didn't have fam big family holidays. My dad was a grafter. I never expected to run a business for 30 years. I never expected to have a house where I live, cars yeah. I have. My children go to a wonderful school. I run a charity. I mean, yeah. it's ridiculous. Of course not. It all, it's all happened. I accept that I've created it. Yeah. But I think, but I think I created it because I, I, I've gone through this life with this attitude my dad gave me, yeah. which is stay positive, yeah. spot opportunities when they happen and just expect good things. Yeah. And if you do that, they happen. I, I believe we all have the same opportunities. I genuinely, really, really do. I think every I one of us have the same opportunities. Some of us spot them and act yeah. on them. And when you spot them, you then have to act on them. You then got to crack on, right? Yes, yes, So yes. you can spot them, but it doesn't mean you'll take the first step. You've got to do that. Yeah, so you spot an opportunity good, yeah. and you take the first step, often well out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Very frightening. Zone is an interesting one, alluding on the comfort zone. I bet every, you know, we were talking about it, it's just one step at a time. Every day you've just taken a step forward, haven't you? That's all it is. Nothing more. Yeah. I never, that's why I don't plan. And I know people advocate business plans. Yeah. I have a business plan of sorts in my head. Yes. But I don't advocate five year business plans and 10 year business plans because that would, that would mean I have to look, I have to stand at the bottom of the ladder and I have yeah. to look up. Yes. I don't want to do that. I want to no. just take a step. And once I've taken my first step, I stop. Yeah. And then I take my first step and then I stop and then I take my first step and then I stop. Every step is a first step. If I have to plan, I've got to stop and I've got to look up. And I yeah. think that's a long way to look. It's quite scary yeah, looking yeah, up that yeah. high. I just think that's a good, you know, just a gem, a bit of advice for anyone, anyone looking to get into something that you know, I think we're, we're very guilty in this day and age of looking at that last thing you want to get to as opposed to. Everything's easy, the, isn't it? Yeah. Everything's yeah. easy. You know yeah. what? I used to have to write letters if I wanted to communicate. Yeah. Now I send a text. It's instant. If I yeah. wanted to buy something, I'd have to walk to a shop. They'd have to often order it. Eventually it would turn up. My kids, they're terrible. They go on their iPhones. They order something. If it's not there the next day, all hell breaks loose. Yes. You know, they, 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 we didn't have that sort of training. No. We had, we had to work for stuff. Yeah, it is interesting where it's all going because the work ethic, work ethic that you would have had 30 years ago, you know, and given to you. I mean, nowadays, a different work ethic is a different mm. way of doing it. Don't get me wrong. But you can still be honest, can't you? You can, yes. And all you those still be honest. Still the same. You can still be caring. Yes. You can still give back. Yes. You can still work hard. Yeah. Um, and I but, totally agree with that. And I think they know, will always stand you in good stead with anything you're yeah. doing. I think, right, we've, we've come to near enough the end of the time. I, I've been fascinated by the journey and the stories, Rob. But thank you ever so much. I've got three <laughs> questions left. Go for it. <laughs> so I got right. Rob Star's three non-negotiables. So to get into Rob Star's life, what are the three non-negotiables? Okay, right. Well, I mean, there there are three, and they're, and they they're really, really simple, and anyone can do. And they're not in any order. Yeah. One, just be honest. Yeah. Be honest about everything. You know, I'm not saying be honest and hurt people's feelings, of course, yeah. but be honest. Yeah. And you know what? I can handle anything you throw at me, no matter what it is. There is yeah. nothing literally nothing too big for me to handle yeah but you've got to tell me so i can handle it right yeah, yeah <laughs> so of course if you don't tell me be, don't tell. be honest with me mm. and, and and you know what i've had staff steal off me mm. and it breaks my heart because yeah. i would have given them twice as much if they'd have asked of course yeah if they'd have just so, asked with you to done that you know so be honest honest care mm. just care yeah. you know what Care about yourself, care about everyone, and smile. Yeah. You know what? Be the first to smile. Just yeah. be the first to smile. And I think that if you if you if you care and you smile, it will just make everyone around you happy. 
Yeah. And that's you really important. All the way through this, mate. So it's made me smile all through. <laughs> you always smile. You're the yeah, perfect no, no. example of that. And I know you've been through a lot of stuff in your life and yeah, we've yeah. spoken about stuff and you never moan about it. And that awesome. doesn't mean you don't, I'm not saying don't talk about it. Yes. But smile and care and care about and listen to other people. Yeah. Just I mean, care. The thing is, mate, on that, we're never going to get always right. But, but if you get no. it right and then you get wrong, you're going to be, you're going to go forward, aren't you? Absolutely. And the last one is, which is really important. Yeah. You've got to be, you've got to be your best. Now, your best changes from day to day. Yeah. You get up with a cold. It's different from getting up with a spring in your step. Yeah. You lose a bit of business. It's def different from winning a bit of business. Mm. But you've got to do, you've got to be the best you can be. I bought this T-shirt. It's a brilliant T-shirt. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. And I saw it and I thought, I've got to have that. And it said, yeah. always be the best you can be. Unless you can be Batman. And then yeah. always be Batman. <laughs> yeah. How cool is oh, that? Yeah. I'd love to because be you, Batman. Because oh, you, yeah. can always be be you can always be better than you are. Yeah. So and don't ever go backwards. But what it sounds from that. your journey, you just wanted to be better every day than you were yeah. yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And it's not about beating anyone or anything like that. It's simply no. about being the best you can be at the yeah. time. And that's what I ask of my staff. I ask that of my family. I ask yeah. of my friends. And I always ask it of me. Am I just being the best me I can be today? Yeah. And if I am, it doesn't matter what the result is. Maybe the best today, maybe I swim the channel. Maybe it yeah. means I don't. It's still my best. It doesn't yeah. matter. Totally. They're my, they're my, they're non-negotiable. Those yeah, three I love for them. me. I love those three. I love those three. So the, the next one, then biggest life lesson so far, mate. Biggest life lesson so far. Um. Yeah. Never. Never. Never take anything personally. That's good advice. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> a stranger can come up and punch you on the chin. It's not about you. He's a stranger. He didn't know. Yeah. He doesn't know your day. No. You meet someone who's who's shouting at you and screaming at you. Why not? Rather than scream back and shout back, why not stop for a second and go, "Wow, I wonder what yeah. what happened to them today." Yeah. What, what happened to you? What are you doing? I love that. Wow. Well. Why are you you're really angry with me? And yeah. what I did was maybe wrong, but it wasn't that wrong. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. But what actually happened to you today? You yeah. know what? And I think I think learning that. Never take any person. I think that's probably for me my biggest take out in my life. Yeah, that's is, awesome. that's and it took me a long, long time. I agree. I think that. that's a great one. And then the last one, then. So uh, looking back at a young Rob Star, <laughs> let's, let's see when you just broke out of school. Yeah. What would, yeah. Uh, what would your advice be for that, for that Rob Star? Okay. Okay. I'll tell you what. I, my advice to me now, if I look back then, because I sound like I'm very, uh, and, I, and I, if I'm sure when I listen to this back, I sound like I'm very confident and all of that. But actually, like everyone, yeah. I've spent many, many years worrying. Mm. Worrying, am I good enough? Am I quick enough? Am I smart enough? Yeah. Will I be able to pay my mortgage? Can, will I be able to put my kids through school? Will I keep the house? How will the business go? Will the charity survive? Whatever it might be, will you know? Will my mum survive after losing my dad? Will there be a you know a, a world war? Will there be a? I mean, big, small. Yeah. And yet, you know, I read something by Mark Twain, a very smart man, <laughs> who wrote some marvelous books. Mark yeah. Twain said, "I'm a very old man, and I have suffered many problems, the majority of which never happened." Mm. And I look back at the times I've worried. And like properly worried, lied awake at night, worried. Got up in the morning and smiled. No one knows. I hide it to myself. Yeah. But I got up in the morning, having spent the whole night worrying, and it never happened. Mm. The thing I was worrying about never happened. I gave up a whole night's sleep. Yeah. I was moaning with my wife. I was miserable to my mother, mm. and and I was just angsty, and it never happened. Yeah. So I think I think my advice to me as a young man would be just that. I think I'd quote him, I'd quote myself Mark Twain and I'd yeah. say, you know what? It'll all be all right. Yeah. Wait till it happens, then worry yeah. about it. Yeah, and yeah. actually when it happens, you won't worry about it. What you'll do is you'll deal with it. Yeah, you'll do something. You certainly won't worry about it. You'll just no. crack on. Yeah, you just crack on, mate. I think <laughs> that is such a good way to end a crack on podcast with Rob Starr. <laughs> to me, that is an amazing way, mate. I thank you ever thank so you. much for your time. It's been a pleasure. pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, I can't wait to get it out there. You've been an absolute joy just to meet and have in our lives. I will say that quite openly. 
it's been a pleasure. Touché. Thank you ever so Touché. much for, for taking your time out. Bless you. Be a lovely man, John. Day. Crack on. Bye, mate. Crack on. Cheers, Rob. See you later. So there we have it. Rob Star. I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, everything about it. And the one thing that really stood out to me was that one step at a time. And we've all been there. We've all had to do that first step into the sea or the first step out of your bed. I love that analogy of just getting on with something. And that's one way to crack on. That's how you crack on. That's how you get on with that first. That first step is always the hardest. And I just, Rob's outlook on life, the way he treats life, Crohn's disease, um, he's lived with that all his life. Um, he got to, you know, he's just got himself in the water, did the channel, decided just to do go to France. I, <laughs> I love that. I really do. And I really hope that you've taken a lot from this one. Uh, like I said, a friend of mine, but really importantly, just a top guy, really nice bloke. And then one thing again, he said, leaving the world in a better place. Rob, you are definitely leaving that the world in a better place. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, send some feedback, like it, share it, uh, tag in one of your friends. Uh, but more importantly, if you've got something to do, crack on and get on with it. Uh, and that's the message. Anyway, have a great one. Crack on. Crack on.